The Story of Deirdre, Part 3. Celtic Folk Tale. By this time the end of the period came at which Deirdre had to marry Conachar, King of Ulster. Conachar made up his mind to take Deirdre away by the sword whether she was married to Nowis or not. So he prepared a great and gleeful feast. He sent word far and wide through Aaron all to his kinspeople to come to the feast. Conachar thought to himself that Nowis would not come though he should bid him, and the scheme that arose in his mind was to send for his father's brother, for Char Mac Roe, and to send him on an embassy to Nowis. He did so, and Conachar said to Fur Tell Nowis, son of Uasnek, that I am setting forth a great and gleeful feast to my friends and kinspeople throughout the wide extent of Arenal, and that I shall not have rest by day nor sleep by night if he and Alan and Arden be not partakers of the feast. For Char Mac Roe and his three sons went on their journey, and reached the tower where Nowis was dwelling by the side of Loch Edif. The sons of Uasnek gave a cordial kindly welcome to for Char Mac Roe and his three sons, and asked of him the news of Aaron. The best news that I have for you, said the hardy hero, is that Conachar, king of Ulster, is setting forth a great sumptuous feast to his friends and kinspeople throughout the wide extent of Aaron all, and he has vowed by the earth beneath him, by the high heaven above him, and by the sun that winds to the west, that he will have no rest by day nor sleep by night if the sons of Uasnek, the sons of his own father's brother, will not come back to the land of their home and the soil of their nativity, and to the feast likewise, and he has sent us on embassy to invite you. We will go with you, said Nowis. We will, said his brothers. But Deirdre did not wish to go with Furchar Mac Roe, and she tried every prayer to turn Nowis from going with him she said. I saw a vision, Nowis, and do you interpret it to me, said. Deirdre then she sang. O oh, Nowis, son of Uasnek, hear. What was shown in a dream to me? There came three white doves out of the south. Flying over the sea. And drops of honey were in their mouth. From the hive of the honey bee. O oh, Nowis, son of Uasnek, hear. What was shown in a dream to me? I saw three gray hawks out of the south. Come flying over the sea. And the red red drops they bear in their mouth. They were dearer than life to me. Said Nowis colon. It is not but the fear of woman's heart. And a dream of the night, Deirdre. The day that Conachar sent the invitation to his feast will be unlucky for us if we don't go, O oh Deirdre. You will go there, said for Char Mac Roe, and if Conachar show kindness to you, show ye kindness to him, and if he will display wrath towards you display ye wrath towards him, and I and my three sons will be with you. We will, said Daring Drop, we will, said Hardy Holly, we will, said Fialan the Fair. I have three sons, and they are three heroes, and in any harm or danger that may befall you, they will be with you, and I myself will be along with them. And for Char Mac Roe gave his vow and his word in presence of his arms that, in any harm or danger that came in the way of the sons of Uasnek, he and his three sons would not leave head on live body in Aaron, despite sword or helmet, spear or shield, blade or mail, be they ever so good. Deirdre was unwilling to leave Alba, but she went with Nowis. Deirdre wept tears in showers and she sang. Dear is the land, the land over there. Alba full of woods and lakes. Bitter to my heart is leaving thee. But I go away with Nowis. For Char Mac Roe did not stop till he got the sons of Uasnek away with him, despite the suspicion of Deirdre. The coracle was put to sea. The sail was hoisted to it. And the second morrow they arrived. On the white shores of Aran. As soon as the sons of Uasnek landed in Aran, for Char Mac Roe sent word to Conachar, king of Ulster, that the men whom he wanted were come, and let him now show kindness to them. Well, said Conachar. I did not expect that the sons of Uasnek would come, though I sent for them, and I am not quite ready to receive them, but there is a house down yonder where I keep strangers, and let them go down to it today, and my house will be ready before them tomorrow. But he that was up in the palace felt it long that he was not getting word as to how matters were going on for those down in the house of the strangers. Go you, Jelbin Grednich, son of Lachlan's king, Go you down and bring me information as to whether her former hue and complexion are on Deirdre. If they be, I will take her out with edge of blade and point of sword, and if not, let Nowis, son of Uasnek, have her for himself, said Conachar. Jelbin, 
the cheering and charming son of Lachlan's king, went down to the place of the strangers, where the sons of Eusnek and Deirdre were staying. He looked in through the bicker hole on the door leaf. Now she that he gazed upon used to go into a crimson blaze of blushes when any one looked at her. Now is looked at Deirdre and knew that someone was looking at her from the back of the door leaf. He seized one of the dice on the table before him and fired it through the bicker hole, and knocked the eye out of Jelbin Grednich the cheerful and charming, right through the back of his head. Jelbin returned back to the palace of King Conachar. You were cheerful, charming, going away, but you are cheerless, charmless, returning. What has happened to you, Jelbin? But have you seen her, and are Deirdre's hue and complexion as before? said Conachar. Well, I have seen Deirdre and I saw her also truly, and while I was looking at her through the bicker hole on the door, Nowis, son of Eusnek, knocked out my eye with one of the dice in his hand, but of a truth and verity, although he put out even my eye, it were my desire still to remain looking at her with the other eye, were it not for the hurry you told me to be in, said Jelbin. To be continued.